You know what time it is. It's time to bring you up to speed on the Calgary real estate market update for March 2021. You've probably seen the news headlines like this one, citing exceptionally low interest rates, confidence in the energy sector, as well as COVID-19 vaccine rollouts as main drivers for the recent bump in sales activity. Or even this headline, or this third headline. I'm going to add to that from our personal experience in our business, we have had more people call us from Vancouver and Toronto, and we predict that interprovincial migration is gonna be on the rise. Why? Because those markets are so hot right now, they're sometimes seeing winning bids in multiple offer situations of 20 to 30% over list price. So now Calgary's relative affordability looks very attractive. If you find yourself in a city where you feel like it's no longer affordable for you, send us an email at hello at liveinnercity.com and we can discuss your options here in Calgary. Stick around because I'm gonna deep dive into the analytics behind this and explain it in detail for you. And as always, I'm gonna end off with advice for buyers and sellers. We just hit 2,000 subscribers and we want to send out a huge thank you for all of you for supporting us. We noticed that more than half of our viewers are actually not subscribed. So if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button below. Now let's start by talking about sales volume. As good as January was, with a 40% increase over 2020 sales figures, February was even better with 58% increase in sales. As you can see from this graph, we were on par with February 2014 sales and beat every other year in the last 15 years with the exception of the huge year that we had in 2007. Now if you take a look at this next chart, at the end of February, we were selling a daily average of 74 homes per day. This is up from the average of 54 we had last week of January. That's a 38% increase in just one month. And to look at it another way, February was a stronger sales month than our best month in 2020, which was July, when all the pent up demand came back as the city started to relaunch from the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Sales are up year over year for all property types, but each of them performed differently. Detached Homes is leading the way with a big 69% increase, while Row Town Homes had a 61% growth and Semi Detached saw a 31% uptick, and the apartment segment is actually up 35%. So across all property types, we saw positive gains. Now let's talk about inventory. The lower inventory in February that we've seen is a big contributor of why we've seen price increases, but I'm going to talk about price after this section. Last month, we mentioned that despite the increase in sales volume, there wasn't as much rise in new listings. Take a look at this graph here. In February, we had about 21% less inventory than the same time last year, which is about 1,200 less homes for sale. I just finished talking about increased sales volume, but why is the gap still about the same throughout February? This is because towards the second half of February, new listings did pick back up, an increase of 16% over last year in February. With a total of about 4,500 properties on the market now, you will see from this chart that we are at the fourth lowest inventory in the last 15 years in February. Let's break that down by property type for you. Detached homes had 30% less inventory than the same period last year, while row town homes have 7% less inventory. With semi-detached, we had 40% less inventory and apartments remain about 2% lower. Price. Carrying forward from last month, we noted that supply and demand economics were pointing towards a price increase in our market and now we're starting to see that. This is what pricing looked like for each property type when compared to last year. The detached market is up 5% while semi-detached is increasing by 4% and 1% improvement in both the townhouse and apartment markets. Now check out this chart that shows when we started our climb in benchmark price in June 2020. Then there is this graph that shows price growth by property types and quadrants within the city. All these are positive stats that are pointing to a healthy healthy state for a recovering Calgary real estate market. Here's our advice for buyers and sellers. Everything I said so far has been very exciting. However, I want you to take a step back as we analyze a few of the realities that you may not be hearing in the news so you can understand the full picture. Sales to new listing ratio. We're currently sitting at 65%, which means that 35% of the new listings are not being sold. This is up from 47% in 2020. However, it's important to note that every new listing is not being sold. We also need to look at 
sales to list price ratio. Right now, we're selling at 98% of list price, which is up from 96.7% in 2020. If you're a buyer, know that sellers are listing pretty close to market value. For sellers, this is not a time to shoot for the moon for pricing. The third metric we need to check out is days on market. With an average days on market of 45 days, it's a good improvement from last year's 57 days, but still a month and a half. Now there's months of supply. As a reminder, this metric means at the current sales pace, how many months will it take to sell all the active inventory on the market today? If it's less than 2.5 months, that represents a seller's market. Between 2.5 and 4 months, it's a balanced market. And above 4 months, it's a buyer's market. So here's an important factor that the months of supply is different for different property types. For detached, it's the hottest with 1.4 months. For townhomes, we're at 2.6 months. Semi-detached, we're at 1.7 months. And apartments, we're still representing a buyer's market at 4.5 months. If you're a buyer, if it's anything other than an apartment, you need to act quickly and decisively. If it is a detached home especially, right now in several communities we are seeing multiple offers happen. For strategies on how to win these situations, you can check out this video or feel free to email us at hello at liveinnercity.com. And if you're a seller, you're not in the position to price your home well over market since you will be left behind. Right now, Calgary is not like Vancouver and Toronto in that respect. We still recommend pricing fairly and with the right pricing strategy and marketing and a little bit of luck, you might just get more than one offer, which will help you get a higher price than you expect. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. My name is Jasmine Lai with the Living in City Real Estate team, helping you keep real estate simple. See you in the next one.